All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of our State of Decay 2 Lethal Zone Guide. Now, last episode, we uh, were using our Expendable Survivor here. We went ahead, uh, we started taking out some play cards. We did uh, run into a little bit of an issue because I have this curveball that's active right now that just makes everything, my, my base is running like crap. Um, and we ran out of fuel in my car. The problem is, I, I, usually you just craft up another gas can. I can't. Right now, it, for me to craft up gas cans at base costs like six fuel. We accidentally made that mistake last episode, and my fuel took a big, big hit. Uh, this is actually... Let's uh, convert a bit more food into... F oh, stop that. Get my refund. So as you guys can see, even that cost an increased amount so we're not going to do anything at base right now we got to get materials back to base but we need fuel um and the issue is there really is no fuel sites around me uh so i have to actually loot a gas can so what i'm thinking about doing is we're going to push up here there's an enclave here we'll see if they have a gas can for sale um if they don't then um I got to go down to here. We got to go down here and see if we can get our hands on a, uh, a gas can at the gas station here. So we're going to take, again, Mr. Expendable. Um, we're going to send him out. Uh, sun just came up, which is nice. Uh, so I am carrying this rec sack in my back. We're going to drop it in the car when we get up there. Hmm. couple screamers there uh, my goal is to avoid That's all the, loader. the smoke if possible okay because we're in a position where one simply cannot just get in a car and, and leave if shit hits the fan I actually have never been this strapped for fuel before. This curveball came at the worst possible time. Um, really complicated things. But I'm walking right now, not out of choice. This is the first time I've really been, uh, you know, pressured uh, this much by resources. Okay, so we got to be careful because in this area right now, there is that other curveball, which is just spawning a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of armored zombies. And uh, yeah, we, we, there's not much we could do against armored zombies like that. They're, they're quite hard to fight in large quantities because uh, you have to pretty much go melee only. There's, guns are pointless for the most part. Yeah, we tried to uh, save a survivor here, but we got hit by that damn curveball, and it was it was mayhem, guys. It was just so many armored zombies. If we had explosives, we would have been able to do a little bit to them because you can blow their limbs off um, and stuff like that. But yeah, the situation we were in was not good. There was just nothing we could do. So there's my car. I'm gonna load this ruck up in there. That shed is looted. Yep. Look at them. Look at how many armored zombies there are. That's crazy. So what I am going to do, though, is to make it easier to fight armored zombies, which I actually have no um, stamina items or heal items on me. But the best thing to do with, against armored zombies is to drop your main weapon and then just use the knife. Try to get them on the ground and execute them. A lot of zombies, man. Check this play cart. There's a couple more. Uh, Somebody already picked this place clean. 
Shoddy shells, samples. Hmm. I mean, we could sell that to the Enclave. We made a little safe area here where zombies won't be able to spawn at least. But they'll still be able to walk in, obviously. I'll check the back of this cop car, see if they're... Oh, check, could you imagine if there's a, a gas can in the back of this? Highly doubt it, but you never know. Please, please, please. Nope. More ammo and stuff, but... Okay, so we gotta head up to this enclave. Damn, dude. Yeah, we get horde, we get swarmed by these guys. It's just gonna be a repeat of the end of last episode. So you definitely want to try to keep a low profile in this situation, because hordes of these guys, there's just not much you can do about them without explosives. And the thing is, they, uh, armored zombies tend to scream a lot more than normal zombies. Like, they'll just yell for no reason. Um, which makes them, uh, it makes it a lot more dangerous. They'll easily scream and bring all the surrounding zombies over here. I do got this 44, but I don't think the 44 mag is going to do very much. Because these guys, I don't think it matters. <laughs> there I already know I'm coming all the way up here and they're not even gonna have freaking fuel for sale are they even alive oh shit
Don't think they're gonna stop coming though, so we might have to bail on this idea. I think they just infinitely spawn here. Feel the beginning. Where am I gonna put that? Mm, yeah, I got no room for that. Okay, I'm gonna buy uh, some stamina stuff though, because we are in bad Last shape. One. They don't even have fuel, anyways. Ah, oh, shit. I can't carry that much. Hmm. We'll equip this. Take the fuel bomb. Now we gotta head down to town here. Uh, it's our only chance that we really have at getting some fuel. Anybody listening out there? I could use a hand. So our survivor is tired as hell right now. Um. All around just bad guys. The smart thing would be to go swap them out, but I don't want to freaking make the trek all the way back up here. But realistically, it's just going to be more of a liability than anything. So yeah, we'll make our way back. We're going to have to swap him out. Um, he's tired. Not that it, if he dies, it is what it is. I don't really care. Um... But I did want him to at least die doing something useful. So we'll let him rest. Um, we'll grab another survivor. We'll get the whole fuel and material situation handled. And then once that's all taken care of, we might even better grab a stealth survivor, which will make uh, traveling a bit easier. Well, you know, we'll just run. We don't have to worry too much. We've got to watch our stand, though. Juggernaut! That feral seems to be stuck. It's good for us. Is he stuck or... No, he's definitely not stuck. Okay, so we just... Crouched at the perfect time, I guess. He might still be coming at us, though. We do have some ammo, so we're, we should be okay. Hmm. I'm on my last mag. Yeah, that armored zombie curveball. Man, that pops up in the wrong spot, guys. You're going to be... You're going to be in, in a lot of pain that... That, that's, that one sucks. <laughs> that one sucks. I always said uh, Nightmare Zone has some of the hardest hordes in all of the game. Um, Undead Labs actually nerfed the har the hordes, in my opinion, with Lethal Zone. They, they were like, oh, you know, we got the, the Screamer, Bloater, Juggernaut, Feral horde in Lethal. Okay, the Juggernaut and the Feral knocked the, the Bloater down. The Screamer, whatever. So it's mainly just one Juggernaut and a Feral. Um, Nightmare Zone has the Armored Zombie Horde which is like 
eight to ten armored zombies and one horde and it sucks if you get that and it also has the double juggernaut horde um which lethal zone doesn't have which is the it, double jug is the hardest horde i've actually been base wiped quite a few times by it um but yeah the double jug horde is the hardest horde in the game in my opinion and uh, it's not even in lethal the hardest horde lethal has it has one of each freak and that's kind of like whatever like you know what i mean it's not really much of a factor in my opinion Obviously, they got the triple feral pack, uh, the armored ferals, which is, which is pretty scary. But All right, so this time we're gonna head out. We're gonna be a little bit more equipped for the the task. This is, I believe, just a UI glitch. This place should not be infested by any means. Yeah, it's just a UI glitch. You ever get that and you don't like it? I think I said it before. You can just log out, log back in, and it goes away. We'll leave this crap on him, uh, but we're going to swap over to somebody with stealth, preferably. So we got our cook here. Yeah, he's got stealth. <clears throat> okay, so weapon wise, we'll grab a sidearm, nine millimeter. Alright, so we got these screamers out here. Um, I don't know what the hell they're doing, but we're going to grab a crossbow. We'll grab the crossbow. This will make our lives a bit easier staying quiet. I'll equip that bad boy. I'll keep some extra ammo on me just in case shit hits the fan. Grab all these bolts. Grab some... Ooh, I really don't have any fire. We got one fuel bomb that we just picked up. We do have a lot of stims, though, which is awesome. As you guys know, those are pretty hard to come by, so... Another thing we'll grab is some distraction items. Okay, so our goal here is to get some fuel. Get the car running, get materials, get back to base. So I'm going to hit this guy. The other guy's going to try to scream. Wanted to get the one facing me. When he bent down, it'd be easier to hit. Because the other guy, if I would have hit him, he'd have bent down forward and I'd have been staring at his ass. It'd have been a lot harder to shoot. Oh, that actually got my bounty for the, uh, the screamer's crouch with the crossbow. Didn't even think about it. It's kind of... It's kind of worked out that way. Let me see. Is this the fastest way? I actually think we might be better off. Cutting down. This is a part of the map I'm actually not super familiar with. Um, if I'm being honest with you guys, I've really never traversed this middle part of the map on foot. Or just in general, I've never really traversed this. Okay, awesome. So that armored zombie mission is done. So we're about, we're about to learn together right now. Now, I know there's, like, a river in the middle here, um, but as for, like, going up and over, I don't know if the middle of the map is even traversable. So a lot of the, uh, the maps have, like, mountain ranges like this shit that you can't, you just can't cross. You got to go around. 
If we can scale this, we'll see. No, I don't think so. All right, it's fine. Um, we'll go down and around. I know I can cross right here, and I think this whole area here is all mountain up until like that. So we'll skirt around this way. I don't want to sprint too much. Uh, a lot of people, they, they like, oh, why don't you like sprint? Sprinting, first of all, it makes a, a good bit of noise. But uh, the main issue with it is it fatigues your survivors very, very quickly. Like, like if you just did this, within five minutes, the survivor's going to get disease. And then the stamina's going to start permanently taking hits um, until he eventually runs out of stamina completely. So, uh, yeah, just sprinting nonstop. Even though you see your stamina going down and then back up, you are fatiguing that survivor. Imagine another invisible bar, your fatigue bar, that's constantly going down the more and more you do things like fight, sprint, all that type of shit. So... We want to make sure that when we get to our, our location, that we have enough uh, fuel in the tank to fight and get back. Now, the thing is, there's another Dewey's over here. So, realistically... Yeah, I think when we get the fuel, we're going to go back that way. If I take out the nearest play guard, this should clear up. Let me check. Is our plague, uh... For real? No, it's not active. We will... Oh, you know, screw it. I will activate it, though, just in case. It's 76 parts. Uh, right now, it's more expensive because of the curveball, but it's only more expensive by 16 parts. So it's still quite discounted. So we'll get that going. Trying to cut some corners here, which it looks like we'll be able to do. All quiet. At least, as quiet as it can get this close to a play card. Yeah, usually this this situation we're in wouldn't be that big of a deal. It's, that's why it's so crazy. It's like, man, like something as simple as a gas can, like that is not an issue for me ever. You know, I, I don't, I'm not ever sitting here sweating gas cans. And I'm literally like, dude, I have no clue what the hell we're going to do right now for fuel because I wiped out my base six fuel by crafting one gas can with that, um, with that curveball going. And now I can't craft another one because I'm not trying to wipe out more of my fuel. And uh, which is forcing us to go out in, into areas that I don't really want to go into at the moment and trying to, uh, to loot for fuel. Uh, see, that was a pretty decent shortcut across here, but I still think it would have been faster to go from the top.
Uh, another Z has given off some serious body heat. I think they're going to experience another wave of high temperature zombies. Hmm. I want to jinx it, but good thing we haven't seen any feral packs. Definitely want to keep my eyes open, though. The good thing about the triple feral packs is they stand still. They don't move until they get aggroed. So if you see them, they'll just be standing like in the middle of a field or something. All three of them just hunched over. And then if you get too close, that's when they'll, they'll kind of aggro up and start running around. But for the most part, they're quite easy to avoid if you don't aggro them. But ferals have a proximity, uh, so you get too close to them and they go live, uh, because what people don't know is, um, hmm, it's actually spun up right here in this house. Zombies are more infectious. They also drop more plague samples. Ooh, got gas. No way, dude. Please. Come on, please. Yes! Okay, there's one, baby. Here we go, guys. So we already got one gas can. Our food numbers aren't too bad. I got a bag of food, too, in the base that we're going to be bringing back, so. Food is not something I'm super worried about right now. Plus, if we have to, we can enact rationing. We got we got options when it comes to fuel or food. Gas, though, the fuel, we have, like, no, no options. So I'll only be able to do three gas cans on my person right now. Okay, so we got two fuel site right there, barrel.
Can't really grab that sample right now. I need all the space I can for gas cans. There we go. Three gas cans. Uh, there might be a fuel ruck up on the top, actually. Grab that and we'll head up. We'll head out. We're, we're good to go. It's all we needed, guys. There it is. Just follow the road down. Like I said, we're going to get back over to our car up here. We'll fuel it up. And uh, we're going to swing back through town, hit the Deweys, grab the two bags of mats, which should uh, allow me to fix my base. And uh, we, sh we should be out of the, uh, the danger zone for now. We're out of plague territory, so the spawn rates are going to be a bit down. Still got to watch out for hordes, though, like feral packs. Turn back on. Let me mark the car. Now, because they got the blue eyes, that means they're more infectious. They're uh, part of that curveball, which is a huge chunk of the map over here. We don't have to worry about the armored zombies anymore, though. We could just head up in here. Be nice and easy now. Anyone listening? If you're mm. some deals, come on by. Wandering trader, the necessities vendor. We'll see what they have for sale. It is a food trader. The one resource I'm not really in the market for. Of course it is. So I believe that's two rucks of fuel, right? I 
think I already put one in the trunk. No, it's ammo. There we go. So we are going to swing by the Deweys. Hardware, we're going to grab the mats. You don't realize how nice it is to have a car until you don't have anything to drive, guys. Oh, we can't swing by the outpost real quick, though, and drop some of this crap off. That way I got more space. Gives us a little bit more space in our inventory. Some, it's going to get a bit live here. Yeah, these shopping centers, guys, can turn into a big problem for you on lethal because most buildings spawn zombies on lethal. Um, and as you can see, you can end up with uh, quite a few spawns if you're not careful. This place looks like a waste of time. Okay. Let's see here. Should be able to get... Generally, you can get two bags of materials out of a Dewey's. <clears throat> it's one. Now, we the thing with the curveballs, we freaking deposit, we multi-deposit it. If we would have done it slow... I uh, probably would have been better off because uh, it didn't register it. And then it was like, uh, we deposited one and then it was like, oh, you need to deposit another one. I'm like, damn, I just deposited another one, but we did it too quick. So if you got multi rucks with a curveball like this, deposit one, wait for it to activate, then deposit the other one. Nothing left to find here. So we were able to get one bag. I got a little bit of extra inventory so we can hit up some of these. See what else we can get.
Mucho la de... Painkillers. So not much. Just little knick-knack things here and there. Yeah, nothing great. All right, let's get back to base. Get back on track. It's quite the little detour, though, that we got hit with here. But that's the thing I love about State of Decay. It's, it's such a dynamic game. Um, you know, every playthrough feels so different. Even when you try to do the same things and the same strategies, especially with the curveball system now, like just a certain combination of events can really change up how your playthrough goes and feels. So, boom. Things are back to normal, finally. Things are working out. I feel good. You know me, just trying to make myself useful. Okay, so we got that done. Ah, please, don't anyone get up. It's just me. I like company, but this is getting ridiculous. We need to expand. Yeah, materials are looking good. Can I upgrade any of these beds, or are they both already upgraded? They're both already maxed. We we're, we are short of bed, but it, it's fine because I, I don't that plan on keeping that guy anyways. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so we're good on that. Let's go ahead and get this survivor situated. We're going to grab our expendable guy. We're going to... Actually, you know what? Really quick, I looked at my meds, and I'm like, man, I'm short a little on uh, meds. There's a play card up here that we haven't looted yet that actually has a meds rucksack. Oh, really? Just wasted that. Awesome. So we'll loot out this play card real quick. Pretty big horde. Ooh, nice. That's pretty heavy. Okay, not a bad haul at all, guys. Not a bad haul. There is also an ammo shed behind here. Uh, you could sometimes get some pretty good stacks of loose bullets out of let me see how much yeah we got we got a decent bit of inventory we could probably hit it all quiet 
see what we can get our hands on. Oh, wow, we got a whole gun. No, this one doesn't have a scope. I was just expecting to get some ammo, which we aren't even getting any of. We hit the ammo shed and we got no ammo. Survivors in need. Okay, so we're going to deposit all this. Special delivery. Seriously, how hard would it be for us to dig a moat? A moat? Get the survivor back on... Guard duty and where's our where is he? Ken, you're up, brother man. He's like shit, <laughs> shit. Uh, as you guys can see, though, he pretty much fully recovered. All right, so uh, as I told you guys, when you have your survivors like this, you kind of just want to push, push, push. So we already, um. Yeah, we already hit this area. Now we're going to start chewing away at this area. So we got the ranch house and the tree farm. I think, we'll, I think we'll start off with the ranch house plague heart. All right, let's see what we got for resources here. We'll give them a little bit of stims just to get a little bit more out of them. Thermite, grenade. When loading out for a run, always consider your objective. A sniper rifle can't solve the same problems as a shotgun. Okay, so we'll grab a bigger backpack just so I can carry a little bit more. Carry the 44 on us and a little bit of the. Do half a stack of 22. And just for a little bit more longevity. Get him a plague cure. Like I said, you can, it depends on how you want to do it, guys. Um, you can go as bare minimum as possible. Uh, I've sent, I've sent guys out literally without even stamina items, you know, just a heavy weapon and just, that's it. Um, but it depends on, like, how much do you want to get out of that survivor, you know? Do you want to increase your chances of actually winning um, and get four to five play cards, or do you just want to get one, or do you want to get half of well, you know what I mean? It kind of just depends. So uh, I invested probably, in my opinion, about two play cards worth of materials into two more play cards worth into this guy. So I would like to get at least two more hearts, but kind of have to see.
Here's our first triple feral pack. Now our Plague Disruptor is already activated. So I'll part protect the front and the side. This place is hotter than a damn sauna. Take it out. I think that bounced off the zombie. Ooh, good shot. Weapons break into our freaking heavy weapons. A bit damaged. I don't know if there'll be enough to kill the next heart. What the? See, so we did pretty good on that 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 heart right there. There's just no securing a place this um, close to a play card. He didn't take a lot of damage. Okay, so guys, this is a free play card. Now what you do is um, you pull right in between this green trailer and this d wall right here. Oh, no, 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 get out. Uh, but you park right here and what it does is the zombies can't get in here now This is another one of those quote-unquote free play cards But this one is one of the easier ones that you can do uh, with just one vehicle. So yeah, you pull in you park right there uh, Generally, you'll have to kill whatever zombies are in this room and uh, that's it. So yeah, this is a nice old freebie So we should be able to get one more with him. We're going to have to probably swap out his uh, heavy weapon, though. See, anytime you see this this kind of barn, just know that it's a free play cart. If you uh, use your car. see a 
lot you were playing zombies around here now. Heavy damn load. We'll leave that stuff for uh Keep it down. Still got Zeds around. Okay, now we just gotta pick our next target, which will be the bungalow here. Kitchen. Doesn't help that I got this damn rucksack on my back. Try to stretch them out so we can get on the other side, get in our car. So yeah, this expendable dude is putting in work right now, guys, as you can see. We gave him a pretty bare minimum kit. Now, some of you guys in chat were like, oh, well, if he does, like, five plague hearts, like, you should let him... No. No, no, no. no. That's not how this works, guys, okay? That... Remember last episode we were talking about that attachment that you got to learn to let go. No, which you're not learning to let go if you're trying to come up with reasons to keep them. That defeats the purpose. There's no amount of play cards that saves this guy, okay? It's just how much he can do before he dies. All right? That's it. That's it. No more, no less. How much can this guy accomplish before he dies? Because, yeah, there's people in the, in, the, in the comments that are, oh, well, you know, if he does, like, five play cards, you should let him know. That just means we got to send him to do five more play cards then. If he survived the first five, then we got to send him at five more, dude. The only reason why I'm even investing this much into this guy right now is because he is a, he is accomplishing a, a decent bit. So I'm, I'm investing a bit more into him than I usually would. Uh, should we repair it? Yeah, we'll repair it. We got parts. I was like, should I repair it or swap it? But I want something that does a lot of impact. Like this beetle mallet chat. Ooh. Damn, maybe we should run that. Now nah, I won't really make much of a difference. Because we're out of explosives. Half plagued. 
Got a cure. Health's still looking decent. So, obviously, we're going to loot these after the fact. Um, trying to think of how I want to do this. So, from the play cards, I can see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm pretty sure there's at least one or two down here. So, we're looking at still 10 to 11 more play cards. And I'm trying to think of how I want to do it. I was thinking about splitting it area right down the middle taking out these two might even have a few up here too but this will open up some loot spots this won't really give me much of anything besides peace of mind Yeah, so what we could do is try to split these two here. We'll try to split the two territories in the middle. We'll have the north and the south. And then we could kind of just swing through one or the other. I think definitely a lot more loot in the south here. A lot of these warehouses are pre-looted, but we got some food. We got some meds. Um, food meds. But this is what I was telling you about creating fronts, you know what I mean? Like everything, as you guys can see, is in front of us. We're kind of pushing it all up against the side. We don't have, you know, stuff randomly all around. We're kind of just systematically pushing, you know, keeping that front going. We split, the, split them down the middle here, and then we'll just have these two chunks, and we just kind of hit them as, as we go. But I'm trying to figure out, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll do this one with him. Higher prices for selling, too. That's nice. Um, I'm going to actually throw a repair kit on this car and gas. As much as I don't care about the survivor, I do care about this car. It's actually quite a... Became quite a nice vehicle for us. Carrying this much might be a bad idea. Yeah, so a big focus of what you're going to be doing, obviously, once you hit, like, the mid-game is just kind of focus and play cards really, really hard. Um, and then once, you know, you deal with the plague threat, then you got to focus on your leader and how you want to do that. Excuse me. Oh, man. Take out the nearest plague heart. This should clear up. This place is 
is hotter than a damn sword. Yeah. So you kind of want to face outward with this one. That way, when you swing, you can hit the zombies and the heart. Pop it and go, Chuds. Pop it and go. We even still have the leftover stim. Oh, it just wore off. So this one is a bit more finicky. You gotta watch the zombie attacks from behind you. But you can kind of do the same thing where you kind of look backwards a little bit. This is feral hair. Get there, yes. Loader. I can't keep this up. Aim for its head. Those guys, you don't want them coming near you, so. Almost there. Can't let him now. This last man killed. So I'm not going to restock this guy, but he is tired. Like what he has on him is all I'm going to invest into him. So when we send him out to do future play cards, I'm literally just going to keep his inventory as is. Um, see how much more we can squeeze out of this guy.
There's a chance those ferals come all the way over here. Yep. Right there on the outside of my base. Whoop. Uh, nope. Didn't mean to store that. I mean, not clean, clean, but whatever. It's all good. Yeah, that, that should be more than enough stuff for him. All right, we're gonna we are gonna let him rest. Uh, let's see. Um, the reason why I want munitions is because I'm, I'm not going to be on like an influence farm. I'm not trying to craft up um, the pain meds or anything like that right now. So, but I will be trying to do ammo at base, trying to just build more ammo using this function in the workshop. And what it does is now that I have the, the munitions, I get two ammo. So it's, it's it's definitely a lot better. And it's quite cheap. Only 30 parts. Some chemicals. We'll actually get that going right now. Uh, you can also buff the medical one, too. Uh, I believe that if I would have picked pharmacology, you would be able to get two meds out of that one. Let me see, is there anything else that we can upgrade here? So we need a trader leader for farm three. Get that going. Medicine for infirmary three. Let's go. Without more storage, we might as well just start trashing whatever we bring back. I know, dude. I'm trying to figure that out right now, dude. All right, so we'll go ahead. We'll upgrade command center to three. They'll eat up some of the materials. That'll also give us another outpost. Now, this dude that we just recruited. What do you guys think the chance of him being a traitor is? Of course, he's a builder. That was his one chance to stay, chat. That was his one chance for life. And he blew it. And he blew it. All right, so we'll go ahead. We'll grab uh, Kim here. I'm going to clean out my box a little bit. Like I told you guys, I like to make sure that we don't have a bunch of just crap. Like this, we could get rid of now. This one doesn't. Okay, so ammo wise, we're doing pretty decent. We got a um, got a fair bit of, of bullets. 
Here's where we can definitely make some work on parts. Well, that's a really quiet weapon. I never noticed that. That's crazy. The super silent melee weapon. Oh, we're in good shape. Back up to about thirteen, almost thirteen hundred parts. I'm gonna catch the plague soon. You'll be all right, Ken. Don't don't start complaining, dude. You got one job. <clears throat> Ken's got one job, guys. All right, so let me see here. We got fuel meds. We got a couple play cards that we can come clean out over here. I'm gonna grab the van. Thing this motherfucking ruckus is bringing is more zombies. Two fuel rucks, meds, and materials. So we're gonna, we're gonna gas up the van though. I am gonna grab uh, an extra rucksack or an extra fuel can. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's nice when you go on these big play cart pushes. You, you clear a bunch of them out, then you go back, loot them all up, consolidate all the stuff you got, and then... Uh, um... Yeah, consolidate everything and then, you know, go out and do another push. Because a lot of the play cards will give you... They'll give you enough resources to uh, hit another one, potentially. You can get some good explosives, things like that out of them. Fire. Stamina items. Get any emptier than this. No more these in here. Surprise, all the zombies just stayed outside like that.
Oh! Let's go execute. And uh, open the trunk instead. Yeah, she's getting pretty close to maxing out fighting, so we're trying to get some fighting done with her. This is a load in the Damn, was that 17 plague samples? That's not bad. Holy shit. Why did that give so much? Yeah, we got enough inventory to hit one more. Nice, got a really nice repair kit there. Let's go hit our outpost, drop all this crap off. Let's see the cell tower. There it is. She is. Is be herself. Okay, there we go. So we got that all taken care of. Still got 
Next two are here. Another fuel and materials. We did take a good bite, though, from that zombie. I take out the nearest play cart, this might clear up. Still plague territory here. Something I didn't even pay attention to earlier. I guess this is as good as it gets in plague territory. Means there's another heart pretty close by. It's probably this building here. Let me see if I can scout this play cart really quick. Pretty sure it's over here. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, that was close. I had to get on that reverse. Yeah, oh my god, that was close. We made out pretty de pretty decent though, guys. We got a bunch of play cards killed. A lot of the map. We still got like I said, we still have this one in the middle here, but um, it's, not, it's really not that bad. We got some good resource numbers. We're gonna be heading back to do more looting. We got one more play card that we can loot, it's got materials and stuff in it. We're going to end this one here, guys. Um, we're in the, just the push phase. Like I said, there's it's just a lot of rinse and repeat uh, right now. And it's build up, spend, um, use expendable survivors like I'm doing. Just kind of do whatever you can to throw things at play cards. Once you get into this mid-game here, uh, you could play off missions. You can use your, you know, your enclaves if you need supplies. Hit them every day. Go and see if they have anything good. Um, ordinance, anything that you can use to kill play cards. Whatever your go-to method is. You know, I've shown you plenty of different methods. Whatever's your go-to. I, I like to use the melee because it's cheap. Uh, all you need is stamina items, which I can produce my myself with, uh, you know, good food supply. Um, obviously, explosives, fire, things like that are good. But yeah, you just kind of keep doing this. And you just keep pushing, you keep pushing, and just one play card at a time. And eventually, you know, you'll get down to a couple left, and and, and we'll go from there. But yeah, next episode, we'll be picking up from here. Uh, we'll continue our push. 
And uh, we're going to probably see if we can get some some stuff crafted up to make the pushes a little smoother. But uh, yeah, our guy's holding in there. He killed, what, like five or six hearts? I don't know, maybe more because I think he killed a couple last episode too. I don't know, he, he, he's putting in a little bit of work though, guys. He's putting in a little bit of work. And, uh, but yeah, thank you again. I love you guys. I appreciate the support. It means the world to me. Uh, remember, if you guys are enjoying us, smash that like button. Drop a comment down below. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.